And welcome, everyone, to another edition of Orlando Magic Pod Squad. Dante Marcatelli, Jeff Turner, George Galante here with you. We're missing the Hall of Famer, David Steele, but it is our pleasure to welcome in the 15th head coach in Orlando Magic history. He is Jamal Mosley. Uh, congratulations, Coach. It's great to have you here. Welcome aboard. Thank you for having me. Thank All you right. for having me. All, All right. right. Well, let us know. I, I guess we're, we're going to take this opportunity for, for everyone to get to know you, but, but we'd love to hear from you and kind of get your emotions, your thoughts, uh, as you try to reflect back on what the last couple of weeks have been like and put it into words what it means to be a head coach. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's, it's so exciting just to be able to – you know, you talk about your dreams coming true and the things you've started out doing and working towards, uh, you see it's come, come to fruition. Uh, it's been a whirlwind, but the great part about it is, you know, you can just keep going day to day. And that's, that's what it's been for me. Just figure out each day, figure out how to just work each piece of it and then go from there. But it's been fantastic. The organization has been fantastic. Just walking in, it's been great. The best first impression he got so far is probably me. <laughs> So really? He tends well, to do that. He I, tends to do I that. Sent, coach. I sent Coach a text. Hey, Jamal, congratulations. You know, look forward to meeting you tomorrow. You know, I'll, you know, I'll see you then. And I hit send. And I've, I've written his name 30, 40 times because I wrote the damn press release. I mean, I wrote all kinds. I mean, J-A-M-A-H-L. There you go. I got it. And I hit send. And I blame Apple. And it said J-A-M-A-L. Yes. And I followed it immediately up. And I went... Damn, rough start. <laughs> That's a rough start. That's rough a rough start. start. Exactly. So, yeah, right. for, always attention to detail here. Big time. <laughs> Big time. I can Big tell. Time I can, I can tell. Right. But that probably happens quite a bit, doesn't it? All the time. Yeah. All the time. Between my first and my last name, it, people will, they're, they're, it's going to get messed up. That was the one I was surprised because Joel is like, well, make sure his last name. And I go, well, it's M-O-S-L-E-Y. Well, how could they misspell that? Well, but, you know, you know, what's weird is that, you know, people, people, my nickname, people call me Mose. Mose. So it's M-O-S-E. But my oh, name is spelled M O S L E Y, sure. and so it throws people off a little bit. But I'm, you know, I get used to it after a while. All right. Well, so I won't do that mistake ever again. No, right. you never. probably will, but it's okay. No, I never will. <laughs> it's, but it's never. okay. But yeah, spell check may get you, but you'll uh, never. I'll get spell it. check. Yeah, spell check's not going to get the best of me. Well, give us a little background. I know you're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I. Well, I've never seen you at a Packer game like the Bakhtiaris and chugging beer at Bucks no, games and no, all that you, stuff. You, but, no, you, but, you probably won't see that. But you have a history in Wisconsin. Just kind of give us, get into your background a little bit and ultimately what, what got you into the love of basketball. Uh, born and raised in, in Milwaukee, as we said, and then I moved to uh, California, actually, at the age of uh, basically 13. Mm -hmm. um, started playing basketball then uh, for, you know, high school in northern, northern, north, northern San Diego uh, called Rancho Buena Vista. Played for a great high school coach. Uh, who started teaching me those fundamentals of the game defensively, um, offensively, you know, certain system. We actually ran the triangle in high school, so that was interesting. Wow. So I yeah, then became, you know, a Bulls fan for a moment, but can't okay. do it too far being from Milwaukee. Sure. Um, from there, uh, got a scholarship, went to play at the University of Colorado uh, with Ricardo Patton, which was a great experience. Got recruited at the time, which is funny, uh, Buffalo's in the league now, you know, by Chauncey. And as I commit to... Colorado, I give him a hard time to this day, he actually left. So he was my recruit bringing me in, and as I signed and go, he leaves. Come on, is that well, right? I would have left too. He was the third pick in the draft. I, I mean, why would, you, why would you stay? It's either Jamal Mosley's coming into town or I can go to the, be the third pick in the draft. I take going to be the third pick in the draft. That's great. And you, uh, guys, you guys both get a chance at the same time, which yes, is kind of cool. It's, it's, it's a great thing. We got the Buffalo Nation, you know, going. So it's been great. And then from Colorado, I... Uh, I ended up going to play overseas. So I played two years in Australia, um, w one year in Spain, and then one year in Korea, and then I bounced around a little bit after that. And from there, it just was a, uh, it was a little bit of a different part of the journey because um, my mother passed away in 04. And when she passed, I think that was really a wake-up call for me to, want to understand being more around my family, uh, close to home, because uh, the journey overseas was more about you know, getting away, experiencing the world, seeing different cultures, and I got to do that. Um, but you know, when she passed, it kind of said, come home. And when I came home, it was, uh, I had a couple options because I didn't know what I wanted to do. A friend of mine called me, said, come down, come back to Colorado, and uh, live with us, see what's going on. And then, lo and behold, being from Milwaukee, George was in Milwaukee, George Carl was in the Milwaukee at the time that I, you know, grew up there and he had coached there. And so we had mutual friends. And one of those mutual friends ended up being, you know, John Welch and Tim Gergerich. And they brought me in and said, hey, you want to just come in and work guys out, 
help work guys out while you're trying to figure out what you're doing. And help, working guys out means be my practice dummy, get beat up, play one-on-one -on -one against Carmelo, play one-on-one -on -one against Kenyon, Nene, Earl Boykins, the whole crew. How about that? Now, you had just played. So I had just played, so I was, I was okay. Yeah, sure. I, was, right, I was decent for a while. Right. Um, and then from there, it was just... Uh, it just turned into being an unpaid intern to growing into a little bit of video room, a little bit of advanced scouting, and then it just doing scout reports, getting on the floor, not just being on the floor, but getting in the locker room, doing the board. Uh, and, and then from there, got recognized by Cleveland, who Chris Grant got the job there, and he hired Byron, and I interviewed with Byron, and he was fantastic. Uh, just his energy, his level of professionalism, it just old school, just mm -hmm. the way he saw the game, and the, but the way he was just, he, he helped build me up in a lot of ways. And then when they moved on from Byron, Mike Brown came in. You know, so he was also, he was actually someone that I looked up to uh, because my mentor, Tim Gergerich, had mentored him. And so it was kind of somebody to look at to emulate on how you can be as a head coach. And it was great. And so he stayed on and taught me a ton. And then from there, Rick saw us, me at Gerg's camp recognized that it was uh, something that could work out. We got together, and I was with him for the last seven years. How about that? Jamal, you know what? Was, Sorry, I was a little long. No, that's right. No, I apologize. Great. Great. So I, I wanted to follow or up. Or you and Les Hoss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The key you to know these okay. things. Right. makes it work. So, you know, if David Steele was here, he would, have, he would have already known a lot of that, and he would have asked background information, because right, right. that's what he does. Since right. David Steele's not here, though, <laughs> I am the senior, as an age, uh, representative. So I, I, I just want to just kind of take you back a little bit, and not for you, but so in the early 90s, right, um, George Carl is coaching the Seattle Supersonics, gets the job there, right? And so back when I played, you're, there really weren't, like coaches really didn't go out on the floor with guys, right, when you worked before the game. You just kind of went out, and the ball boys would throw you balls, and, and you'd shoot, and you'd get ready for the game. Or you might play one-on-one -on -one or shooting games or something like that. Well. So we're in Seattle, and I look down at the other end of the floor, and there's this coach out there. I think he's a coach. He looks more like my economics professor in college, <laughs> right? That's Gerg. It's Tim Gergerich. Yes. Okay, who has, for, you know, people will tell you, he is, he goes by different names, the Yoda of player development yes. and things yes. like that. So I think about you getting to Denver, and Gergerich being there, and then John Welch, who many people around the league are just, you know, players talk about John Welch and his work ethic yes. with the players and everything. For you to end up there, to start your coaching, mm -hmm. not just with George Carl, but with those two guys, mm -hmm. how important was that for you, Jamal? Oh, there's no words that describe it. I just really like, I just was a sponge as much as I possibly could be. And the great part about those guys was the, the one thing they taught me other than the development and growth of these guys, it was like just being selfless. They just wanted to pour back into helping me grow. They just wanted to, how do I get better? How can we develop this young man in order to be whatever he wants to be when it comes to the coaching ranks? And it was always about the players. It was always about how do we get them better? And that's the biggest thing I took from that. And also just being able to shut up and just coach. Don't, don't say a word, sit here, be a sponge and do what you need to do. That was the big, like Gerg has always said, just kid, shut up, get on the floor, work and don't mess it up. <laughs> that's great advice. That's yeah. a great, that's a great research there. So you remember that, you, you remember yeah, that. Yeah, well, you know, Gerg I, what's being interesting out is it's like, so the, yeah. I started, you know, down the, the rabbit hole, as David Steele calls sure, it, sure. and start looking, and, and you know, so these names start coming back and everything. And I've always been a fan of Gerg's, uh, just watching him as he moves around the league and reading about him, um, but really getting to you know kind of read about John a little bit. And um, you know, I, I watched a video that the National Association of Basketball Coaches had done on you, and you talked about those guys. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got to ask you okay. about George Carl. Yes. Right. Okay. So. George, now, this is interesting because I, I saw a tweet from George. George is 70 years Hold old. Hold on, George oh, tweets? Yeah. Oh, no, he's on. George oh, tweets. Seven, he's a really? big yes. time tweeter, yes. right? And I was surprised. So he, obviously very excited for you. Um, and he, so this is an interesting thing. He used the term that, and he described you as an old school coach 
using new school techniques, I think. So that's interesting to me. So what does Coach Carl mean by that? Well, old school coach, I mean, it can mean a lot of things. Cause it diff they, people taught different ways back then. You know, it was like, do it this way, and this is how it gets done. But as he, he evolved and he formed, I just learned from those things, the, the fundamentals of the game, doing it the right way, playing the right way, th like those things. And everybody says it, but old school was a little bit different. It was a little bit more rigid. Um, and you can still have that level of discipline and detail, but I think the players now learn a little bit differently. And now it's more about the relationships. You can still demand the same things, but I think it's the relationships that you have with these guys in order to demand the things that are quote unquote old school. Um, and I, th I think I've just, that's the importance of it, having the relationship with these guys to, to let them know you care about them mm -hmm. and them getting better and it not being about, oh, we have to do it this way because I said so. I think that's so important. Do you have a secret when it comes to that, though, Jamal? Because, I mean, I saw on social media, and I was just joking, I knew that George Carl tweets, but <laughs> yeah, right. so, many, so many <laughs> players, past, present, you know, when the announcement came, when you got the job, and you just, I mean, so many tweets from all kinds of players, past, present. Right, like, right. what does that mean to see all of that, all of those guys that have your back, that you've had their back all this time? You know, honestly, you don't think about it. You don't th well, you don't think about that impact at the time because it's not about me. And that's the biggest thing. So when people are reaching out and they're saying all these things, I don't, I got all the congratulation texts, but I don't, I'm not on social media. So that's probably why, you know, but how do I describe it? I'm, I'm humbled because it's why you do it. You do it for them feeling better. You do it for them getting better. You do it for them, you know, reaching their max potential. And that's all that matters, you know, for me. So you just, you're grateful that you made an impact. And it's, again, it goes back to Gerg, how he taught me. Just, it's about them. How do you get them better? How do you help them reach their best, their, their best self? And how, and how do you do that, Coach? Is, is there a trick to it? Do you have to, obviously you're working with these young guys and you're trying to show them something on a daily basis, but is it when you see something click out there on the floor that they realize, okay, this guy taught me this or this? Like, how do you make that connection and build that trust? Honestly, and this is, it's, to me, it's not a lot of rocket science. I think what it is is you do have to really care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think no, it's human. It's, it's the human being. And people get it so caught up in that it's, it's about basketball, it's about the X's and O's, it's about wins and losses. Yes, we are in the business to, for, of wins and losses, but these are young men that have families, that have moms and dads and sisters and brothers, and they have real lives just like all of us. And when you can make that the, a level of importance, then that's, when the, it's, that's where the relationship begins. Outstanding. It's refreshing, too. I, so I got to know, you, you're trying to figure out what you want to do. You're there in Denver. You've got Carmelo Anthony, Allen Iverson, right? I think you get reunited with Billups ultimately, right? Was yes. he there for a little yes. bit? Yes, yes. How was that, uh, learning the NBA with that mix of guys? That had to have been fun. That was a fun group, a fun group. Because you know what? As, as people used to say, they were, you know, they played hard. They played hard. They played aggressive. We were tough. We were just, you know, physical. And we had, there was a crew. You know, there was Birdman there. There was Nene there. We had a, we had a, a, a different group of young men that had their own personalities. But what, that, what the one thing they had in common when they walked on that court, it was about winning and pulling for each other. You know, you know, we had Jr. We had Dante Jones. We had Iverson. We had Birdman. We had Nene. Dude, that's, we a had, good, that's a good mix. Yeah. Think and about so that, with, right? with, with that group mix. of guys, it, it, like it, my it, old New Jersey it, it, <laughs> it was uh, it was just a great group of guys. They just and they they band together and they went out to win games. And that's you know, I, I admire George in so many ways for how he just allowed it to be. And sometimes and you know, sometimes you just have to get out of the way. And a lot of times he got out of the way, but he also knew who he put in place to help get those guys in the right position. So it was, he was just the way he orchestrated was great. You know, it's interesting. You learned, oh, sorry, JJ, but you learned, you said you, when you were playing in high school out to San Diego, you start learning <coughs> the defensive principles. Along your NBA career path, it, it seemed you seem to have made quite a name for yourself on the defensive side of the floor. Obviously, you understand the offensive side mm -hmm. as well. But what is it? 
with the defensive side of the. What are some of your philosophies? What are some of the things that, that you like, your strategy, your schemes on the defensive end? And then we'll look at the offensive end as well. Defensive side is where I think that's where old school comes in. I, I think it's there's principles, there's concepts that you have to have. Mm -hmm. I think it starts off with just being in a defensive stance. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, you know, moving forward here, it's going to be about being tough. It's about communicating and being talkative. Um, I want to be the highest level communicating team in the league. And then you move into that from, you know, just tied together, five guys on a string, moving as one. Because the NBA, as you know, has moved more to where offensively you, you can, you're putting up points. And, but defensively, you want to be able to sustain, you know, the level of their, their star power. You got to stop the stars in a lot of ways. And the way you do that is as a unit. And I think being disruptive, taking teams out of their sets is a way that you can do that. <clears throat> Doesn't mean clothesline of people like your Nets team. So it's not <laughs> well, you know what's funny was you you know, know, what when, when I hear does. George Carl say old school, my first thought is tough defense, right? That's yeah. when you say old. When he's an old school coach, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would say, well, he's a defensive coach mm -hmm. probably. Um, and then when you start talking about these new school techniques or whatever, I think one of the things that you hear is players coach, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's a players coach. I think you put it, I mean, as long as when you care about players and you communicate mm -hmm. with them and you want them to be your best, you're a player's coach, right. you, you, no matter if you're a defensive guy or an offensive guy. I, I think yeah, you agree with I that. Think a lot, yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of times you get pigeonholed, you know, because if you hold the defense or you run the defense, or, oh, he's a defensive coach, or he's got great relationship, he's, he's a player's coach, or, you know. I think it all goes together because that's part of coaching. Yeah. Like, you have to be able to and willing to adjust to your team. And I, and I think that's, that's coaching in, 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 a, in a sense. What excites you, Jamal? Now you're here, you're here in Orlando. What excites you about the Magic roster that you're about to take charge of? You know, you have great character guys and working guys and guys that just love to be in the gym and a youthful group. That so it's kind of like me starting out as the unpaid intern in Denver it starts out like you don't know what to expect. And so with this group, you know, I want to be able to give them some things that they can expect, but lay the foundation for how we can be really, really, really good. That's, okay. that's the joy of this group. And it's, a, like I said, a great group of guys that want to work. That's a great way to look at it. You've got seven guys on this roster that are 23 or younger. Yeah. You're about to add two more, <laughs> maybe three, right? You're gonna have, you have 10 guys mm -hmm. that, are, that are under the age of 23. But even just knowing you from this little bit here and your background, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not afraid of that. You're not, you, you embrace that because it seems like if you're a coach, it's a great opportunity to, to kind of help mold these guys on their, on their journey. That's exactly right. I, I think you can help these guys be better. It's about how can they be the best individuals, yet how can they be the best individuals for growing this team? Um, and then what does their NBA journey look like walking in? How do the, what do they see themselves in five years? And when you can start with that in mind, you know you can help them grow and develop so they can see that it, what an end product can possibly look like. You know, it's interesting when you look at today's these offenses today, and we're seeing it in the finals, and mm -hmm. you're seeing all the points per possession and, and all these uh, per, or per hundred possessions. Uh, what does it take? We're offensively, obviously, it's a three point shot, and mm -hmm. that's where we're going. And some teams play inside out, some don't. But what, what do you see? What do, what is going to be your staple on the offensive end? What would you like to see? Pace, mm -hmm. space, and passing. Because if you have that, you can add a lot of dimensions to what your roster is. And I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's going to be this way. Yeah, right. But we have different guys on the team, and I want to find out what they feel their level of success is, how they feel they fit in any system, where they can be utilized more, because I want them to reach their, their highest level of potential. So, but it always, it's going to come back to the pass is so important moving the basketball, because now you can create in different scenarios how we drive to the rim, get fouls, shoot the open threes, and just make each other better. I think that's huge. And it's interesting, as I sit here and I listen to you and everything, and it, it, you've, it's a huge responsibility that you've worked for so long uh, to get to this point. But what's interesting is you don't do this all by yourself, right? Like, w when you take this job as the head coach of the Orlando Magic, now you've got to build a staff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've given much 
thought about that. I think if it was me, when I, as I you know take a job, I would begin that process right away. I don't want any specifics. Don't want any names. Wouldn't put you on the spot like that. But what? no, you want names. Well, that's what the, pod, the pod squad is all about breaking, breaking stories. News, breaking news. Breaking news. That's but right. I think he's just getting to know us. Right, We'd okay, like to have him back as a guest again. Right. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to burn anything point. here. So great point. Like, oh, so Jim, well, what would your as you begin to put that process, I know you've thought about this. What kind of attributes are you looking for in a staff? Um, teachers. I think that's the biggest thing because you talk about this roster and you're going to need people that know how to teach and what they're teaching. Um, you need development um, guys that can help these guys get better. Uh, you need energy and enthusiasm and for me, it's about the positive side of it. How do, how do they teach from a positive standpoint? Do they lift these guys up? Because these guys are going to be need, to need to be lifted up in certain moments because it's their first run at this NBA thing, and it, it can get you sometimes. So you need people that can encourage. Um, and then just workers, guys that just are in love with the gym and getting guys better. I think that's, that's the key. Just, and staying at it relentlessly and just finding a way to get guys better. Can you give us some insight into what that process is like? Like that, the coaching staff, you've been on three different staffs now. Just how much time you guys put in together, what goes into it, and how nice it moves when you're all on the, on the, on the same wavelength. Oh, it's, it's beautiful when you're all on the same wavelength because you understand the goal, the mission of what you're trying to accomplish. And then the biggest thing is that it goes back to my days in Denver where you talk about it's about my first start, I should say, is that I just learned it was about the players and how do we get them better. And then it was about lifting the, the head coach up so that message can be, be relayed from top down. You know, and I, and I think that's what it does look like. I don't know if it's dinners on the road, and, you know, drinking wine together or whatever that looks like, but yes. that you just have something. Yes. Okay. It involves Fair. all that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes definitely involves yes, that. That's yes, right. But, sure. but it, it's, it's about just, you know, coming together because I, I've really learned that the players, the players see us first. You know, like the, the great part about this organization, what I've seen from the DeVos family is that um, family. Mm -hmm. And then it tr trickles down to the next people, family. And then so now when they look at our coaching staff, are they going to say family? And now you walk into the players, family. Like you can see it from top down because everybody uses the tag, hashtag word, culture, family. Right, but then right. you see up and it, like it's, it's, you're like, hold on. You haven't talked to him in like three days. Or, <laughs> and it, but this is really what it is. And that's why I think it is what the importance of how you build your staff. How about your family, Jamal? I mean, are they excited to, to make the move and the, you got Disney yes. right down the road? Is that a, is that a selling point? For that was the selling nice. point. When my daughter and my my middle son found out that we were moving, it was tears and uh, do we have to go? And they have friends and sure. but the the next thing we went to was well, you'll get to go to Disney World, and from there it was you know that was a selling point. <laughs> that was a selling point. But they're excited. My my wife it, um, does a phenomenal job of making sure that we're sane. Um, that she she's the biggest support, you know, she's just a, she's a, she's the rock of the family, and so I have three of them, seven, six, and four, and it's but it's it's constant, and she's she's doing it. Yeah. I've got my hands full with seven and six. That's what mm. I've got. I've got two at seven. Oh, and six. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's which awesome. Is, which is fantastic. And the, uh, that but that third one that changes things. That's that, a game changer. Right there. <laughs> that is a game. That's that is and, and so now I look at my little one, and you start to think about all the 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 the, the youngest ones and all. You know, as they get older, they start to, oh, you were so easy on him. You were so easy. As you oh, get older, gotcha. and I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, my little one's probably going to be saying that when he gets older, too, and the middle <laughs> will say the same exactly. thing. I always advise, stops. see, my kids are grown, but I always advise people when they ask me, that third child, it's like it's going from man to man to zone, really. Yeah, Without and, and really a doubt. Does change things. You are, a lot of holes in his own defense. <laughs> you are absolutely right. you got to pick your poison with that one. you got to figure out what you I have the lowest ranking uh, defense in the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my, my three have us running uh, constantly. I've seen it in action. Yeah. Seen it, yes. you're in sometimes we lose one. You're in a run, you you're in a run and jump right now. Yes. You're, you're in a run and jump Absolutely. defense. Box and one, figure it out. Oh, well, I, you, we've seen videos of you playing overseas in mm -hmm. Australia, and, and, and you are a fiery competitor on the floor. Do you have that same fire uh, uh, on the sidelines? Do you harness it? What's your demeanor going to be there on the sidelines? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to balance it. 
Okay. Because that fire, I, I, there was real fire there. I played <laughs> with a ton of passion and energy. Yeah. And, but, you know, I also realized that with a young team, you also have to be the, the calming voice mm -hmm. because the game, once you walk in the league, is sped up quite a bit. And they have to learn to watch it slow down. So if I'm on the sideline going crazy, how does that help them? And that's my goal and my job is to help them, you know, help the game slow down for them. And so I'm probably a little bit of a balance. When I need to go, I'll go. Um, but the passion is definitely there. That, I don't think that's going to – that fire burns. I yeah. think we, – we, can we agree that we all would like to see the double pop mm, collar? Right. Somebody – Come on. I mean, that was – Someone <laughs> sent that. I and I'm just like – I had never seen that before. <laughs> and then when, you know, social media was coming – and I and, the, and I think it was the NBL sent that tweet out mm -hmm. that uh, congratulating right. you that and, and, and had a nice highlight package. And it was a lot of double popping collars, but that, both, not just one. You didn't go with one. Yeah, went I mean, you both. went both. That was, I think that was a thing then. I that, think that was a thing then, if, I, if, I'm, I not, if I'm not can mistaken. Can we pop both lapels after <laughs> the first <laughs> win or something? Can we, can we get one of those? Are we even going back to yeah. that? No, there's so many questions. Oh, it's so I great. I don't, I, don't know if I, could, I don't know if I could pull that off. All right, all right. It's I like are we it. going back to... Yeah. Certain time for the coaches oh. and everything like that. Is Do that? A a I don't even know if I'm allowed to comment on that, oh, but I mean, okay. I, I, but good, I'm going to go ahead and say a lot of coaches I think were probably pretty comfortable. Yeah, in a lot what of PR we were. guys were comfortable yeah, right. in the uh, yeah, right. in the jumpsuits too. I'm not gonna like, lie, kind of like that too. Didn't <laughs> I tried you? to get that approved at home and it got shot down. I don't know why. I don't think that's going to work for the broadcast <laughs> no, team. No. Uh, so, so I got a question for yes, you. Sir. So, you know, my David still probably want to know this, and I'm curious. Are you a pacer on the sideline? Do you, or do you think you'll be a uh, up and down the sideline? I'm just thinking about sight lines for me. I'm just being <laughs> so really Tell me right where you need to find me, where you want well, me no, to no, be. No, no, just like, are you going to be you blocking my view? He wants you out of his way. Oh, well, I'll know. do whatever I got to do to get out of your way. <laughs> just, if you need me to sit down more, I will sit down more. If you want me to stand no, you know, closer to like the sideline. We've had many coaches through the years. You know, I will, I will say this. The worst uh, for me ever was Doc Rivers because for whatever reason, you know, Doc and I are friends, but he used to like to put his hands on his head uh, and, the, and, the, and it would widen the jacket out. <laughs> couldn't see and, it. And you really, it was like a wall and everything. So as long as you're moving, I can dodge and go around you. I think That's you should fine. just sit right on top of the table. <laughs> I, you know, as, you, as he was talking, I was thinking about that. Perfect. I was thinking about just sitting like at the scores table yeah, right there and like just without a doubt. Yeah. I think I could do right, that. Sorry, JT. That's all right. I, well, I think uh, follow on Harper and Dallas, they just get moved off the floor yeah. so they could see. So they anyway. could see. Yeah, they I, like they being, I like to be down in the action. So as long, as, as long as Joel and George don't move me, I'm going to be right there with you. <laughs> but here's what I don't you want you to do. If there's a replay, please do not look. If you want to know don't if you need you. a replay, don't look at me, please. I, do, I just don't like that pressure. I'm probably going to do that. Uh, are you <laughs> now that I know you said that, I'm going to go. But here's what's going to happen. If it's a travel call, I'm going to look down at my notes as soon as you make eye contact with me because don't worry, George sits behind me and he'll yell, challenge! <laughs> oh, he takes care of the officials for you. You, you take care of the challenge? You don't have to worry Sometimes, about that. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes okay. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll give you one of those. Or I'll I just yell at the official and I then think I'll look away like no. Magic saying. fans would love to. I know you haven't looked at a lot of these guys. I know you've studied to play against the Magic players, but I think Magic fans would love to know your thoughts maybe on some of the guys and as you get to know them, mm -hmm. you know, just, just kind of what you've seen from afar. We didn't have Markel and Jonathan Isaac for, for much mm -hmm. of last year, but maybe start there and just kind of what you see with, with some of the roster here, if you don't mind. I mean, it was a, always a, t a tough scout. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at Markel as he's, you know, getting back, but when we when scouting against him, it was just like, you got to make sure you don't let him get to the rim. Because mm -hmm. uh, his ability to attack and get in the paint was just, you know, phenomenal. Um, and then as he started stepping in and knocking the shot down, you had to, okay, you had to respect things a little bit more. So that actually, you know, you just watch his growth and his, you know, his journey has been fantastic, you know, just to see where he's, what he's done. And then Jonathan has just turned into, you know, this leveling up each time leveling up, getting better and better and better. So he was a hard cover for us, and it, the matchup was always tough. Um, you talk about RJ, um, who just athleticism and his ability to score and put the ball in the hole um, in different ways and different levels. He's an open court player, so you knew when he had it, and you had to get back in transition because it, it was a go. Uh, along the same lines with, with, with Cole. You know, you know, Cole was fiery, intense, and getting after it. And so you know that we actually, you know, tried to throw a trap at him a couple times because you know you had to, you, you wanted to get the ball out of his hands because he was going to give you a problem. Um, and then you look at, you know, um, Chuma. Um, he was. I don't know that he played against us. I think he went down. So I think he. I don't know okay, if he played he against us. Those, yep. Um, but Mo, just, did you see Mo? Did, did Mo, Mo? I know Mo missed a lot Mo of time. Mo missed a lot of games. I'm trying to think of Mo. Mo 
uh, played a little bit in the second half of our game, but I just just knowing him and 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 you know having the scouting report on him and what you know his capabilities, it was just that. You know, his length is a problem. When he's around that rim, he finishes, he can finish well. And then the fact that he can step out and knock a shot down, you know, it puts the pressure on if you have a traditional five that's not agile and can move. So it was, it was, it was very, it was a tough scouting report from that side of it, just being able to understand how each one of these guys plays. Well, that's a great breakdown. I, I, what, are you excited about being in the war room in this capacity? Without you, a doubt. You've never done it in Without, this role, right? I've that's never done be it fun. in this role, which is, which is exciting. Um, but again, that's why Jeff, Jeff John, Matt, AP, uh, Anthony Parker, that's why they're great at what they do and the scouts are fantastic at what they do. I'm going to sit back and just be able to be a fly on the wall, listen, and trust their level of expertise because that's why they do what they do. Let us know what that room's like because we can't get anywhere near that. <laughs> we have not, we've not been asked for anything over the last Fair Their enough. faces actually are right outside. Do not let them in. <laughs> they, they, they don't want you guys in there. No, no I can go they in don't. there from time to time, okay. but they, they, they can't. We, we offer no value. Now, now I, I probably can't go in there. I can't go in there. What enough. impressed you about Jeff and John then through this whole process and meeting with them and the DeVos family? I know you mentioned a little bit the organization, but what impressed you about the, 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 making that, you know, knowing that that would be a good fit for you? Exactly what you just said. Um, the DeVos family and how it's basically trickled down to them mm -hmm. and their level of communication and transparency of exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it, um, but knowing that it's being built together. And when you can see that and know that, it, it just makes things transition easier. Um, and so Jeff and John, which Jeff I, I knew for a bit passing you know, through in Denver and being there for a year together, and then John just because everyone talks about you know the old school and the way of doing things, he just you know straight shoots it to you straight. You, you just it it was a it was a it's a perfect balance, if if that's the best if sure. that's the best way to describe it. Well, that's great. Well, I know it's going to be a little bit drinking out of a fire hose for the next couple okay. <laughs> couple of months, but you're ready for that, right? I mean, that's that's kind of, I guess the last thing is just share with everyone your excitement uh, for this challenge this year, the coming years, and. Uh, you know, finally getting this well-deserved opportunity. I'm so excited. I mean, words don't describe it. It really, it really doesn't. And, and as I'm sitting here, it's actually super surreal mm -hmm. um, because you, you always envision yourself in this, in this spot and you think you know what it's going to be like, but you don't. You have no idea. But I'm so excited for the opportunity, the opportunity to continue to learn, the opportunity to continue to grow. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll take it back to those intern days. It's, yeah. it's, it's similar. You don't know what you don't know, but you can just build off of the things that is, is what you're based on. And that's relationships, yep. developing people, making people better, and allowing the people that are great at what they do to do that. Fantastic. Well, I love that, and, I, and I'm sorry because I know your vision didn't involve the three of us sitting yeah, here they sharing didn't, they that did, with you. They did not put that in the presentation. <laughs> and we're going to need to make sure that always gets left out of every presentation from here on forward. Right. No, no. But we're happy to be a part right. of it, and we're happy to have you here, Coach. We look forward, Thank you guys look for forward to getting me. started, okay? Best of luck. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. That'll do it for this edition of Magic Pod Squad.